Welcome to section 4.8. All right, gentle people, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with this quiz question. And I want to highlight this fact about this quiz question, and that is it's kind of a culmination question. What I want you to understand is that chemistry builds on itself. So what you're going to see in this question is a whole bunch of topics rolled into one. So give it your best shot, and we're going to go ahead and tackle this problem out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's start out with our first reactant, aluminum nitrate. And so like I mentioned before, nitrates are soluble. So let's go ahead. So let's go ahead and put an AQ after it. Now we're going to go ahead and react this with KOH. And if you guys go to your solubility tables, what you'll find out is most hydroxides are insoluble. However, group one is an exception. So this is aqueous. We get our yields arrow and I gave you one of the products on my quiz question, and that's going to be aluminum hydroxide. And if you guys go ahead and look at your solubility table, you'll notice that hydroxides are mostly insoluble and aluminum is not an exception. Lastly, we have KNO3, and this is going to be aqueous because it has a nitrate on there. And so remember that these products were formed by metathesis. I swapped the partners on my initial reactants. The aluminum going with the hydroxide and the potassium going with the nitrate. Now, before we move on, we got to go ahead and balance this equation out. I see that I have three hydroxides on my product side. So I'm going to put a three in front of my KOH. That gets me three potassiums. I'll put a three in front of KNO3. This gets me three nitrates and again, one aluminum. So now everything is balanced. So now that I have established my metathesis reaction, I can tackle the rest of the problem. And the rest of the problem is asking for how much product I'm going to make. So if I want to know how much product I want to make, well, that means I want to do a theoretical yield calculation and establish what my limiting reagent is. Now, remember to do a limiting reagent problem and using my equation, so that I can do the stoichiometric analysis, I want to get things into moles. So if we read the question prompt, I have a two molar solution of aluminum nitrate. So instead of writing two molar, I'm going to go ahead and write two moles of aluminum nitrate is going to be over one liter. That's what molarity means. Now, instead of one liter, I'm going to write, I'm going to write a thousand mils of solution. So this is equivalent to that two molar that I've described at the start of the problem. Now I know that I'm going to have a hundred mils of this solution. So what that gets me is it tells me how many moles of aluminum nitrate I'm going to have. At the end of the day, I'm going to have 0 0.2 moles of aluminum nitrate. Now I can look at the stoichiometric ratio and for every one mole of aluminum nitrate, I'm going to generate one mole of aluminum hydroxide. So my moles cancel out with my moles and I'm left with 0 0.2 moles of aluminum hydroxide. Now I got to do the same for my other reactant. I have two molar KOH. So instead of writing two molar, I'm going to write two moles of KOH per one liter or a thousand mil. Now, in this case, I have 200 mils of this solution. So again, the mils are going to cancel out. That's why I got moles in the last analysis. This corresponds to 0.4 moles of KOH. Now, based on my chemical equation, for every three moles of KOH, I'm going to generate one mole of aluminum hydroxide. Moles cancel out with moles, and I'm left with 0 0.13 moles of ALOH3. So this is the least amount. So this is my theoretical yield. The KOH was my limiting reactant. 
So the correct choice was 0.13 moles being generated. All right, general people, so to continue our discussion on metathesis, another way that we can remove ions from solutions besides precipitation reactions are gas forming reactions. So if you guys go ahead and look at this, I'm gonna combine HCl with Na2S. So I'm gonna do my transposition. So my hydrogen's gonna combine with my sulfur, the sodium's gonna combine with my chloride, generating NaCl and H2S. Now, whenever you have H2S, that is considered a gas. Now, there's a few gases that I want you guys to watch out for and some intermediate products. So the equation above highlights this first equation. If you generate H2S, it is a gas. It is going to make a metathesis reaction because I am removing ions out of solution. The hydrogen ions and the sulfide ions are coming together in this reaction and they're bubbling out of my liquid. But let's go ahead and take a look at these last three and why you should watch out for these intermediate products. So let's say that you spilled acid HCl on your lab bench. Now one of the common things to do is to pour baking soda on it, which is going to be sodium bicarbonate and you're gonna go ahead and run this reaction. So if I go ahead and do my metathesis, what I go ahead and form is first, I have Na going with my Cl, so NaCl, which we've seen before as an aqueous entity. Now the other thing that we form is we've got the hydrogen here combining with my bicarbonate polyatomic ion. So this makes H2CO3 aqueous. Now you'll notice that this was on my gas forming slide. This is an intermediate product. This species right here is not stable in liquid water. So what happens is this is going to break up. So H2CO3 aqueous is going to break up into liquid water plus CO2 gas. So the real molecular equation for this particular reaction is HCl aqueous combined with sodium bicarbonate is gonna make NaCl, that's aqueous, followed by this decomposition product, H2O liquid plus CO2 gas. So what I want you guys to do is watch out for these intermediate products. These guys are gonna generate the gas plus liquid water. So I just showed you guys what happened with H2CO3. The same thing is gonna happen if you form H2SO3. It's an intermediate product, and so it will decompose into SO2 gas and H2O liquid. So always keep a lookout for these intermediate products. So because these are forming gases, make sure you keep this into account because these will, these will cause metathesis reactions to occur. They will remove ions from solution. Well, I hope that made sense and remember to stay safe, Chem1A.